I'm Black Bright and broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. Um, for those of you who are just looking at me for the first time, um, if you like what I talk about, please subscribe, share and like. Um, and um, what I do is I tend to talk about a variety of subjects. Um, as you can see, it's quite diverse. Um, it's black centred, not necessarily black focused. I tend to talk on issues relating to um, my heritage um, as a black Brit and anything that affects um, my community. Um, sometimes I talk about uh, things that are quite general and affect a diverse group, a diverse group of people. So, um, yeah, you get a little bit of everything in this um, on this channel. Um, today, I I was well. I decided to talk on something that um, my friend sent me. Um, I'm a Libra, so sometimes it might seem as though I'm a bit wishy-washy and that I don't have any conviction. But it's basically basically because I always I try to look at two sides of the story. And as a result, when I got the video I'm going to show you, uh, my first reaction was horror. Um, then I posted it on, on Facebook and, you know, people were reacting in anger and saying that black people don't stand up for themselves and stuff like that. And then when I listen to it again, I could be more objected, objective. So I like to look at things kind of more than once because sometimes your first reaction blinds you to what is actually happening. Then I, I watched it and then I thought to myself, okay, I put it aside. I wasn't necessary. I wasn't going to talk about it actually. But then I, um, I got sent a news clip from the Jamaican Information Service. Well, actually, it was a Jamaican Gleaner. And it said that 54.9% 54 54 of 750,525 people in Jamaica prefer not to work in the formal system of employment or in the labour force, which in other words means they hustle. And it led me to think, of, okay, okay, um, I know that Jamaicans like to hustle. It's creative, it's inventive, it gives them a sense of autonomy, it's a part of the culture. And as such, it's almost like a right, um, because that is what they do. It puts bread on the table, they're not hurting anyone, and that is how it's perceived. However, in the UK, I'm not saying that the gentleman in this video is hustling. Um, he has papers and stuff like that. But um, hustling is not allowed. It's like getting money under the table. I mean, the law took away our rights of getting money under the table years ago. Any kind of way that they think that we can make money um, whether it's because they think we're going to try to evade tax or whether it's because they think it's money laundering, it's been stopped. But what bothers me more than anything else is that it seems to be biased. I don't understand how nail shops are allowed to take in cash, only cash. It's not like you have an option. It's not like you can use your card. No, only cash allowed. And I don't understand why nail shops that are own, that only accept cash can get away with it. I don't know if the tax office goes in and reviews them to see if um, they, um, what you call it, they put in a tax form based on the exact income. I don't know why they don't put undercover um, people in there to see what's happening but they, they couldn't do that anyway because they're very smart those people only recruit their own and then you have a sense of loyalty you have a sense of trust and yeah they have a successful business they have a successful business but my point being is that there seems to be a sense of bias or as black people we feel biased or we feel discriminated against because it's almost like um, 
the slightest little thing is picked up on. So I'm going to show you this video and uh, then I'll talk a little bit afterwards. OK. Ah, uh, I pressed the wrong button on the side. Sorry about that. Well, needless to say, it gets out of hand, but it's a five minute, it's a five minute video. And um, like I said, it got a lot of um, views on my Facebook page. And yeah, um, there's a lot of things in that. You know, number one, the police officer, he attended in a respectful manner. Uh, number two, but he made a set of assumptions, and by making a set of assumptions, it riled up the charity operator. Now, to me, there's that that charity operator could have shown him some ID to show that the charity actually is in his name, or he is the director of the charity, or, or a representative, or whatever. I'm not quite sure what the ID would have proved, because sometimes, as a charity, you're going to have members who are not necessarily on the, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, I can't remember what that bloody document's called now. But they're not necessarily on the document, um, on the legal document then. So it's, it wouldn't, by showing his ID, it wouldn't necessarily prove anything. But what it does prove is that the charity is allowed to sell books. Well, not sell books, but display books. Now, um, what what is interesting is how the people were goading him. That could have been quite a peaceful um, outcome. But when you have people goading and goading and goading, it's really irritating because you feel as though you have to prove a point. And then, you know, the police officer, the female police officer, she obviously feels uncomfortable. She then puts her hand on the camera. She's probably um, calling in for support. 
and then as as the um, video goes on they end up I don't know if the policeman put his hand on him or whatever and I don't know what happened I don't know what the outcome was because it didn't show the outcome but the thing is is that you know when I was um, watching that video I kind of thought to myself, why are we so predictable? Why are black men so predictable? You know, people, you know, the Caucasians have studied you so long. They know how you're going to behave. They know how to press your buttons and you rise to it every single time. And when, where does it get you? It doesn't get you anywhere. You're hauled off in a bloody cell or you're detained in a bloody detention centre. You're criminalised. I mean, to be honest, I think if uh, if when that guy said to him, I've got my, have you, where's your ID? And that guy responded and said, oh, you know, I don't have any ID on me today, but I can bring it into the police station if you let me have your station address then, you know, it might have had a different outcome. I don't know. But the fact of the matter is, is that the police under his powers does have a right to ask for ID if he feels that someone is trying to do something on the sly. Now, they do um, target a minority. It is racial profiling. And, you know, I learned something in, in that um, video because I didn't realise that newspapers were allowed, but books weren't. I'm not quite sure why newspapers would be allowed um, to be displayed and get donations, but not books. And I tried to research it, but I couldn't find the legislation that covers that because I run a magazine. I don't charge for my magazine. I ask for donations, which is what he was saying. Now, um, I'm not quite sure how that works then, because they, you know, the police officer's voice was so quiet, I couldn't hear the legislation he was talking under. So I couldn't work out whether or not you were allowed to dis. Um, on what conditions you are allowed to display? On what conditions are you allowed to donate? So, it, it, I mean, sometimes, instead of reacting to these things, it really is good to just observe and try to get the, um, the deeper meaning behind what is going on. In that scenario, I felt the deeper meaning was we have black men who feel targeted, who feel angry, who feel frustrated. They're trying to put bread on the table in every which way they look. They It is being taken away from them and they feel totally powerless. And that translates into hostility and anger because, you know, survival is a must. And if you take the food from a lion, it gets angry the same way if you take the food from a man, he gets angry. If he's unable to provide for his family, he is going to get angry. And so when a police officer targets or appears to target a minority who is already feeling victimised, then it's going to kick off. But in reality... That police officer was doing his job. He wasn't rude. He wasn't one of those police officers that was obnoxious. He was actually quite calm through the whole process. I don't know what happened in the end, but it was actually quite calm in the process. I don't know if they got back up. It just, you know, it was just a bit too long for me to go right through to the end and too long for me to show you. But it is on my Black Right News um, page on, on Facebook and you can watch the whole video there if you are interested to know what the outcome is. Um, let me just make sure I covered everything. Money laundering. I mean, that's one of the ways they, that's one of the guys is why they say you can't make money tax evasion. Um I like that the, the, the brother knew his rights. I mean, he was well clued up. He wasn't just out there not knowing his rights, which was good. And he had his papers with him. I mean, how many people 
I mean, I when I go when I go to these um, little charity events and I put my magazines on the um, on the table, I've never once thought about having um, my charity papers. It never even occurred to me. So I learnt quite a bit from that video. Um, yeah, the goading was ineffectual and it's unnecessary. And like um, somebody on YouTube said, you know, and he wasn't even from England, he was from America. Some black guy from America, oh, you've, all you black people have his mouth. You know, it really irritates me when people do that because they do not know individual circumstances. And what does it serve if you try and react? I mean, I don't know what happened to those guys that did react, but what, how does it serve you? Are you going home to your family? after you've run up your mouth and got aggressive and, you know, the police have carted you off. What does it prove? How does it serve you? So it really irritates me when people on Facebook goad and, you know, um, goad people and make them angry. Because we should, the same way white people study us, we should study them. And white people are very, very clever you know, in their manner of communicating. Do you see how calm he was? And yet even, and the thing is, it's, it's insidious because that calmness is quite provocative. <laughs> it's really kind of weird. It's quite provocative because in a sense, uh, it's really difficult to explain because in a sense, he's talking in a very calm and respectful way and he's doing his... Um, He's exercising his rights, a police officer. Meantime, a black man who feels targeted, who feels racially profiled, who is doing something innocent like displaying books, feels put upon, even though that police officer is calm because it's historical and it's something that's mounting up. And it's things that are happening in the family and it's the things that you're seeing in the newspaper and it gets perpetuated. And it gets compounded. So even though somebody is talking in a calm and peaceful voice, it can still goad you. But it's up to black people not to get riled up. It's, it's to exercise emotional intelligence, self-discipline, not to react to every little um, expression or emotion. Because it's our downfall and it's not going to get you anywhere. I'm not saying that you have to appease and, you know, um, bow down. And I'm not saying that. But you can retain an amount of dignity and gain respect by communicating, mirroring their um, way of communicating. Learn to mirror the way they communicate instead of reacting towards it and becoming defensive. That's all I'm saying. You probably beat me up on this, but... You know, that's just my thoughts. Um, and like I said, you know, in the Gleaner, Jamaican Gleaner, only yesterday they put out something, which is what made me relate to this video about hustling and how uh, 750,000, I think it's 525 people prefer to work outside of the formal labour force. And so they hustle. And so I'm not saying he was hustling, but, you know, if you're getting donations, it could be a form of a hustle. You know, as it happened, he hadn't got any donations. But it, it doesn't take away from the point that, you know, it's their way of surviving. It's every man, black man's way of surviving, because sometimes the formal route is taken away or is too difficult um what else is there yeah i think that's all i've got to say on that video um yeah and have a good day your comments are also appreciated don't scold me too much bye bye